If you like small things as much as I do, you might be just as charmed by the Twisby Diamond Mini Fountain Pen as I am. This is the White Rose Gold Edition. I received it as a Christmas present, and if you stick around to the end of the video after I review and ink it up, you might just get to hear a very big announcement. Now the first thing I thought when I opened up this pen for the first time was that it's just absolutely beautiful. This is my first time with a, anything but a Twisby Eco really from Twisby specifically and I was just blown away. The rose gold details are beautiful. The white isn't my fate. I mean I, I tend to like colors more than I like white but this is just stunning and classic and I love it. It's got this kind of red shiny finial on the top and it's so cute. This is what it looks like in comparison to the Twisby Eco, also the rose gold, but the smoke edition, which they don't have in the mini form. I also wanted to compare it to my favorite fountain pen, which is also a mini pen, the Kaweco All Sport. And you can see that it's a little bit larger than the Kaweco. So it might be a good option for you if you have slightly larger hands, but you still like mini pens. You can also see here that the Twisby is a bit thicker as well. So just a bit bulkier overall for a mini pen. It is still very small. And then I'm going to post the caps on the two mini pens to show you what that looks like size wise. So this is more of what you'll be using when you're writing with them. And just taking the cap off of the Twisby Eco to show you that it ends up being right around the same size. Today I'm going to be inking this up with the Private Reserve Ebony Purple Ink. This is a sample that I bought from GoulayPens.com. I really love using ink samples before I buy a bottle because the bottles are really expensive and this way I can make sure that I really like it. Oh gosh, this pen is so pretty. Okay, getting in a paper towel so I don't make too much of a mess. I always recap the bottles before I put them down because they are pretty top heavy. And you can see the barrel on this pen has that diamondy sort of faceting on it, which is really cool. And it is a built-in piston filler. So you just twist the end to pull up a pretty extraordinary amount of ink, especially for a mini pen. So the way that I opted to fill this up is to just dunk the whole nib right into the bottle and it turned out to be a pretty big mess. We'll see that in just a second. I'm being very careful. <laughs> it is a little bit difficult to fill things up this way using the sample bottles, so sometimes I will use a syringe instead, but just went ahead and pulled that out of there and yep, there it is big old mess. So I'm going to clean that up, but I did know what I was getting into when I started playing with inks. <laughs> so that's just the way it is. And something that I knew I was getting into with a white pen specifically was that not all of the ink came off with just the paper towel. So the way that I actually managed to clean this up right away was to dip a cotton swab in just some water and that took care of it. As you can see right here, I didn't have to go for the alcohol. I did not want to ruin the finish on this pen, especially since I just got it and that took care of it. In order to post the cap on the back of this pen, you have to twist it onto those threads in the back and you don't always manage to get the clip in the right spot, which is a little bit annoying for me, but I happened to get it right on that try specifically. So maybe I'll get better at it over time. We'll see. But I am very much smitten with it the same way that I am smitten with this Chic Sparrow Emma pocket size journal where I keep my ink swatches and that's what we're going to do next. Now the nib on this specific pen is an extra fine, which is why I was so surprised that this line ended up super juicy. And it turns out that it's just this particular ink. So it's very, very saturated. It's like an incredibly saturated purple to the point where it looks black under most light, but I actually kind of like it more than black. It's like better than black is how I would describe it because it does have that richness of the purple. But if you just look at the entry right above this, you can compare the line to a Kaweco All Sport medium nib. And so <laughs> you can see this, this is much thicker than the extra fine that I have come to expect. Now Twisby's nibs are usually on the broader side, especially compared to maybe a Pilot extra fine. So I was kind of expecting it to be a bit broader than what I was used to, but you can uh, you can see here that this ink in particular made this one very, very broad. And then I took a cotton swab and did a swatch in that little box there, and that's where you can really see the purple. It tends to come out a lot lighter in that particular application. 
Later in the video, I am going to show you what this nib and pen combination looks like with a different ink. That's going to probably be your more average result. I think that this ebony purple is kind of a rare bird and that it is going to run much wetter than other inks. So now that I've got my Twisby Diamond Mini all inked up, I'm going to do a journaling page using it. And this is something that I like to do because I watch all kinds of videos about inks and I find that they don't really properly prepare me for what a paragraph looks like in my particular journaling style at least. First thing I'm doing here is I am opening up a Bomb Kuhen illustrated washi tape. This one is really pretty. I believe it's the Nap Village design. I love their washi tapes. And it came with two stickers on it, so I am putting those onto the page. The next item that I'm pulling out here is a washi tape sticker roll that I got from Jet Pens that has these little succulents, and I love these because they coordinate really well, and so I don't have to do a ton of work trying to make things match. I pulled out a couple of these and kind of sprinkled them around the pages and I really like the way these are coming out. I've been using this roll quite a lot. I have a few different washi sticker rolls and this one's my favorite by far. Next, I'm gonna use a couple of stamps from the pen and paper set from Everyday Explorers Co. with the Versa Magic ink in the color Ocean Depth and I love this set. Probably because I end up journaling about pens and paper a lot <laughs> and inks and this set is pretty much made for me. I also really like that with clear stamps I can see exactly where that stamp is going. I've always struggled with rubber stamps where you can't see through them and they never quite appear where I want them to. And I have much better luck with these but I also have been practicing more and I found that with rubber stamps I got too frustrated to practice so. I stamped down the ink of the day and the pen of the day and that worked out well for me because then I could go back in with my pen and fill in the names of those. And now that I'm getting a chance to actually sit down and write with this pen, I am in love. I am always just really surprised at how well the Twisby pens write, especially considering how inexpensive they are. This one is more expensive than the Twisby Eco, both because it's a diamond Twisby and because it is the rose gold edition, which is slightly more expensive than the usual, but it's just they all write so well. They're smooth, they're consistent, they're comfortable, they're beautiful. I just, I love it so much and the value that you get from having that built-in piston filler is just fantastic value for sure. I did want to show you a comparison against the other extra fine pen that I have, which is the Pilot Kakuno. Now, I know that Pilot nibs are much finer than other pen companies, but you can see here the main paragraph on this page was with the extra fine Pilot Kakuno with just regular old black Namiki ink. And just kind of flipping back and forth, you can see how much broader that extra fine Twisby Mini is with this particular ink. I only have honestly two complaints about this pen. One is that there are these tiny little rubber band looking things. They're black. There is one on each end of the pen and it's to seal the cap once it's screwed on and they come off pretty easily. I actually was told by a commenter that I was missing the one in the back and I hadn't even noticed that it was gone. And so be careful with those for sure. If you find a little tiny black rubber band on your desk and you're wondering where it came from, it probably came from your Twisby Mini. My other complaint is that they don't come in as many colors as the Eco does. I honestly would love to buy another one that maybe has a medium nib or even just a regular old fine nib, but they don't have as many colors. There's kind of a black classic one, there were some aluminum silver ones, they seem to come out with new ones every once in a while, so I am keeping an eye out because I would really, really love to buy a second one with a different nib size. You can change out the nibs for these and they sell replacement nibs. It's really easy to change them out. And unfortunately, they don't sell the rose gold nibs by themselves. So I feel like if I'm going to change out the nib, I might as well just buy a second pen. <laughs> Another thing that I really love about the Twisby Diamond Mini is that it gives you the ability to 
twist the pen and separate the grip section that the nibs attach to from the rest of the barrel of the pen and that makes it really easy to clean. I have a lot of trouble cleaning out my Twisby Ecos, especially the ones that I use shimmer inks in because I just end up twisting and untwisting and twisting and untwisting the piston just trying to get water through there quickly and with this one I can just screw the pen apart in half and get a bulb syringe and and flush that out with some water really quickly. In the past I have used the little wrench that comes with the Twisby Eco and used that to kind of unscrew the piston, take the whole pen apart from the back section, and then clean it out that way. But this is just so much quicker and I'm much more likely to do it on a regular basis. Overall, I love this pen. It is definitely one of my favorite found pens that I own, and I have inked it up and used it completely several times since I filmed this video. I do want to show you one of the other inks that I put in here, just so you can compare what the extra fine nib looks like with a less wet ink. And so here I am writing with the Pilot Hiroshizuku Shinkai ink, which is my favorite of the Hiroshizuku inks. It's beautiful. I have a whole bottle that I bought after actually using two samples worth. But you can see here my theory was correct that the ebony purple was coming out a lot broader in this pen than the usual ink might. So I guess if you're going to use a really super wet ink then you might end up with a broader line similar to what I got in the beginning of this video. And then if you're using kind of a more average wetness ink you're more likely to get a line like the Shinkai, but not as hairline fine as the Pilot Kakuno that I showed you earlier in the video. I'm honestly not that into extra fine nibs. I was when I asked for this one and have since learned that I prefer a medium or a juicier fine nib, but this is my favorite extra fine nib that I own. It is not bad at all. It's not scratchy at all. It's beautiful. You still can see and enjoy the ink colors in here. And really, it just makes me want to buy another one with a fine nib or a medium nib or both. So let me know if you hear that Twisby's coming out with more colors because I could use a colorful one. I should also probably mention that this is a steel nib pen. The rose gold is just a plating that's on there, but I really do enjoy writing with it and I have wondered about gold nibs and just have really been enjoying these steel nibs and the prices, so <laughs> we'll see if I end up getting one someday. I always love chatting with you folks in the comments, so I would love to hear whether you are potentially shopping for this pen, whether you already own one, and if you do own one, what nib size do you have and what has your experience been with that nib size? I really love this pen. I'm sure you will see more of it in my future videos. I believe I have promised you a big announcement, and here it is. I have teamed up with Chic Sparrow to design a signature journal cover, and I kind of can't believe that that's a real sentence that I just said. If you've seen my videos in the past, you know how much I love Chic Sparrow. I have so many of their covers that I've purchased in the past. And so Jennifer reached out to me and asked if I wanted to design one. It could be anything. And so this is the Fairweather design. It's going to be coming out in July. I will have more information for you about this soon. So make sure you're following me on social media at Lauren Fair WX. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss it. It's going to be a limited edition, and so if you want to get it, you may just have one chance. It's coming in one size, the A6 folio, and I can't wait to show you the inside of it. Jennifer says that's where the magic is. Anyway, I hope you're having a good day, and I'll see you next time.